Hello and welcome to another exciting Breakfast with Unity. I'm your host, Max Moreau, and today we're going to be doing a Raycast gun thing. Now, I've done this on the main show before, but I was kind of shocked that we didn't do this on Breakfast, and Breakfast has a lot of little tidbits like this, and I try to make things that are either cool or useful for people, and this is definitely falls under the useful category. This is The, the Raycast gun is the most common... Uh, gun type in in games and most games use for for any projectile that appears to be instantaneous it actually is an instantaneous raycast and actually even in some games where it's not instantaneous they use raycasts for instance like the call of duty series they have um, bullet drop in those games and they have um, they have uh, time to hit but they actually do that by calculating raycasts for where the position will be and then providing delay for that so um so what am I going to do? We're going to create a Raycast gun type thing. So let's create... So we've got an empty... Do we have something that just will kind of work? Eh, we'll just make something real quick. So let's just do our standard first-person shooter setup. We're just going to create a... Um, what is it called? A plane. We're going to drag in our... Um, standard assets... Character controllers, first person controller. We're gonna get rid of our main camera because there's already one on the first person controller. We're gonna put the first person controller somewhere appropriate. So zero, zero, zero. Let's see where that is. Yay. And we're gonna move it up a little bit so that it can be on the ground. We're gonna make the ground wider by five. five. Wow, that's a really reflective -y ground, isn't it? Normally like that? I don't remember it being that blue. Okay. Okay, I guess that was just the selection. Weird. It just looks like it's rendering really oddly. Oh, okay. It was some of the false lighting that was happening, I guess. Alright, um, so uh, let's see. So we've got a first-person controller. We can we can move around. I'm just going to do... The... Okay, cool. And uh, we're going to just create something we can shoot at. So I'm just going to create a cube and just throw it somewhere. Make it kind of big. Just so that we can shoot stuff on it. We're going to create a very basic decal system or something to prove that we're firing. To start with, at least. So, um... So we have a little target, we can we can hit play, we can look around, find our target, shoot at it, cool. And it has a cool shadow because we have shadows now, yay. So, um, what are we doing? So let's start with the script. We're going to go with Raycast Gun, we're going to create a C-sharp script, and we're going to call it um, Raycast Gun. And what we're going to do is we're going to have a, we don't really need any parameters. We're just going to make this thing go for, for right now. Um, we're going to have some later though. So let's go ahead and sketch something. So public float fire delay equals 0.1F. Um, and we'll just make this a uh, semi-automatic gun for right now. So, um... We need a fire delay. Do we need anything else? No, that's probably a. Oh yeah, let's put a public float damage equals 1.0f. That seems like a good thing to have. Um, all right, so let's start with that. So um, we probably don't need start though. I'm just going to leave it up here for right now. In update, what we're going to do is if oh yeah, we want a button. So public uh, string button name equals fire. One, fire one's a good default because fire one is defined by default in um, in the uh, project settings for input. This will always be here. Fire one. Uh, we've got a few extra ones that aren't always here, like horizontal two is not always here. But yeah, so fire one is. So this is a good default for button. So if input dot get button down button name. So if we get that button, if someone has pressed that button this frame, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to, and actually I'm going to have one more thing here, private bool um, ready to fire equals true. So if the button's down and ready to fire 
equals equals true. We could actually just say ready to fire. I don't think it requires us to actually do the equals equals because this is a boolean. So uh, so if we press the button and we're ready to fire, then what we're going to do is uh, we're going to raycast physics dot raycast um, transform dot position tr um, transform dot forward. Um, layer mask. We're going to probably want a layer mask. Let's go ahead and add that public layer map, layer mask, layer mask. So you can just pass in layer mask. So we've got transfer direction, max distance, layer mask, max distance. We also want hit info. So let's do the one that has all these. So out info, max distance, layer mask. So we need a max distance, which is, I'm just going to do math f dot infinity. And uh, we're going to do the hit info. We're just going to do out hit. We don't have a hit yet. So we're going to make that in a second. So um, raycast hit. Hit. So now um, it says is there something wrong here. Oh yeah, because it's not an if state. If physics dot recast all this stuff. So if we hit something, and what we're doing is we're firing from our current position, from wherever we're pointed. Uh, so it's from our current position through wherever we're pointed. We're getting the information out into our recast hit here. We are casting as far as we want. We could put a, a distance parameter if we wanted to limit that. Um, and we have a layer mask so we can adjust uh, what we hit. And actually, I'm going to default that to negative one. So by default, it will try to hit everything. So um, remember, a useful defaults means that if someone drags your script, someone who doesn't know anything about your script can be like, oh, but Raycast gun, I'm going to put this on something. And it will just work. It will just do something by default. So by default, it will allow you to fire every 0.1 seconds, it will do 1.0 damage, it will use the fire button, and it will hit anything in the scene. So, so what are we doing? Um, Physics.raycast, transfer that position, transfer that forward. All right, so now we can uh, do something when we get a hit. So what we're going to do at first is going to be doing a send message. So we're going to send message damage. Um, the send message, sorry, and the, the message is going to be called, um, I'm going to call it a gun hit. What should we call this function? What, what would the function be? We could just call it damage, but I want to do more than just damage with it. Um, let's just call it damage. And uh, so we're going to send message damage, and we're going to give it the damage amount. So because uh, send messages can take a uh, generic object and then and then send it properly. So we're going to save this. So what this will do is this will call. Um, oh wait, this is not exactly right. We need to do uh, hit dot uh, uh, collider dot send message. So um, so what this will do is it'll allow us to receive it on the other end. So if we put a Raycast gun on our, I'm going to put it on the, um, I'm just going to put it on the main camera in the first person controller. So it's just going to fire out of the center of the screen. Um, and we can hit play. And we won't get much out of this right now. If we click, it'll say send message damage has no receiver. And that's all it does. And the reason it does that is because we didn't specify that this doesn't need no receiver, so this doesn't need no receiver. Um, uh, require, so don't require receiver. So now that message will go away. But now, now since we fixed that bug, we actually have no feedback whatsoever that this thing's working at all. Um, but for the most part, there's gonna be a lot of things that don't care about the damage stuff. So this is actually the appropriate way to do it, but uh, we need to actually implement something to actually use this. So what I'm going to create is I'm going to create a C-sharp script called um, um, uh, play um, 
spawn on damage is what I'm going to call it. And what we're going to do is we're just going to spawn an object, and in this case it's going to be a little particle effect, but public game object um, object to spawn. And all we're going to do is we're going to create a void damage um, uh, float damage amount. So remember we're passing that damage parameter into this so we can we can take it as a parameter out of it and so we can get you know information about the damage we actually don't care about the damage amount in this case we're just going to spawn something uh, as a matter of fact we can probably even get away with not having this but i'm going to leave it in there for now because we're going to change how it works in just a moment here so uh what we're going to do is we're going to create a uh, we're going to instantiate um object to spawn at um yeah, we're just going to use transform.position for right now. You're going to, you already see the problem, probably. Transform.position and transform.rotation. Save. And then all I'm going to do is just create a really basic um, particle effect for this. Particle system, we're just going to make it do kind of a... Uh, we'll just... Yeah, we'll have it still be conic. Um, so rate is, uh, we're just going to get rid of the rate. We're going to give it a one-time burst of, like, yeah, 30 particles. We're going to give the start speed, we're going to give it a little bit of randomness. And we're going to make it a lot faster. So we're going to just make it so that it has a start lifetime of 0 0.5. And we're going to make the start speed between 10 and 20. Let's see how that looks. That's too fast. 5 and 10. And actually we're going to make the lifetime variable uh, right up between two constants. 0 and 1. Let's see how that looks. So we got a little kind of burst thing there so that we know something's happening. And uh, let's just go with that for right now. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put this in here. We're going to call this uh, hit particle. Go ahead and get rid of it in the scene. We don't need that there. And on our cube, we're going to place uh, spawn on damage and our hit particle on it. Oh, wait. Sorry. On the parameter for spawn on damage. So if we hit play now, if we shoot at the ground, nothing happens. But if we shoot at this we get um, a particle effect. And it it uh, doesn't matter where we hit it, it always comes from the center. And so we obviously need more parameters to send here. Also, we, we have it on loop, so that's actually continuing to do things. So let's get rid of that loop real quick. So so if we had a small object, this would probably work. It would The subterfuge would work. You wouldn't notice too much where you were hitting it because it's a small enough object. But since this is a large object with a large surface area, you can see that uh, it does matter. Also, if we hit it on the other side, the particles kind of go through the back there, which is not what we want. So we need to put more information into our send message, but we only have one parameter we can send. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a class and send that instead of just the float. And the class is going to contain our damage and any other information we want. In this case, we're going to have it contain the damage and a raycast hit with the rest of the information of the hit. So uh, let's go ahead and I'm going to create that in a separate script file. It doesn't necessarily have to be. Actually, yeah, let's just put it in the raycast gun, whatever. We're going to have to define it up here. Um public um, public class uh, I'm gonna call it um, gun hit info actually let's just call it gun hit because the other thing's called raycast hit so that'll be kind of consistent so gun hit will contain a float 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 damage and it will also contain the hit info so we're gonna do uh, uh, ray cast hit um, hit so it'll have the damage and the ray cast hit and actually I'm gonna call it a ray cast hit all right 
So now what we're going to do is instead of send message damage, we're going to do uh, we're going to create a new gun hit. So um, gun hit uh, gun hit equals new gun hit. And then what we're going to do is we're going to throw in, we could have, we could have thrown a constructor together. I'm not going to bother with that just right now. We're just going to do it the old fashioned way. Um, so we have a new gun hit and, uh, we're now going to set gun hit dot damage equals, oh wait, these need to be public, public and public. So gun hit dot damage equals, um, damage and gun hit dot ray cast hit equals hit. And then what we're going to do is we're going to send message using gun hit. Save this, and then we're going to have to fix this on the other side here. This now takes a gun hit. And um, I'm going to call it um, uh, gun hit. So uh, what we're going to do now is instead of doing instantiate object to spawn transfer to position. Now we didn't even use the damage before. We didn't care about the damage, and we still don't care about the damage. Um, we just want this thing to uh, to take a take a hit, and um, and we, damage may not be the best term for this, but uh, but we'll just stick with that for right now. So what we're going to do is um, we're going to just uh, instead of using transfer to position, we're going to use gun hit dot point uh, dot raycast hit dot point so this is the position that we hit so now it will be properly positioned and then the rotation what we're going to use is uh, gun hit dot raycast hit dot normal um, and that actually is not good enough because it's not quaternion so we need quaternion dot look rotation and we give it this this is a vector so this just says look along this vector so if we hit save now and we hit play If we shoot this thing, it shoots wherever we're aiming at. I don't really have a reticle, but you can see that it's shooting in the center of the screen. And um, it will now properly reposition and go out from the angle that you want. So this is a really big particle effect. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. Um, let's go ahead and lower the conic on it and then also make the start size 0.1. And let's see how that looks a little bit. Too small. All right. Um, Zero point five. Just tweaking this a little bit. And then let's make it so that it actually looks like it's coming right out of a conic. The radius is one. Let's make the radius as low as possible. Zero will automatically replace it with whatever the lowest value is. There we go. It's, it's too exaggerated still. It's going a little too far. Let's change the uh, lifetime between 0 and 0.5. All right, cool. You got a point. You got an idea of what's going on here. We'll probably make a better particle when we play with this more. We are going to play with this more, too, because there's more to do. Um, I also want to look at other options versus send message and some some other things, um, but uh, but we'll get to that later. So raycast gun dot unity save and uh, where did it save it? Raycast gun there is. Let's put it into raycast gun. All right. So thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please email me, pushypixels at pushypixels.com. You can also tweet me at Drakfire, that's D-R-A-K-F-Y-R-E. And um, please donate uh, uh, Cooking with Unity, uh, patreon.com slash cookingwithunity. Thank you very much, and you guys have a good one.